Hello everyone and welcome back to Groupthink. Groupthink is our dialogue series at CU where we pick a topic and have a meaningful discussion guided by burning questions. My name is Madison and I'm a high school senior from Birders, Oklahoma. Um, and now if everyone else wants to take a second to introduce themselves, that'd be great. Hi, I'm Nuid. I'm 16. I'm from the suburbs of Chicago and my pronouns are she, her. Hi, I'm Mariam. I'm also from the suburbs of Chicago and my pronouns are she, her as well. Hi, I'm Ashley. I am 17. I'm from Vancouver, Washington and I also use she, her pronouns. Hi everyone, I'm Zoe. I'm 17 from Lexington, Kentucky and I also use she, her pronouns. Gary. Hey, I'm Gary. Uh, I'm one of the, did you go already? Oh yeah, you did. Sorry. Yeah. I, I like the people that, the, the, the two people that watch this are going to be like, this guy's so aloof. Uh, I'm Gary. I'm one of the co-founders of Civics Unplugged. Um, I am in New York City. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, and today we're talking about love. So recently we've been starting off with a cool exercise called word association. So what three words come to mind when you hear the word love? And today when we go through the, the words, feel free to explain your reasoning or expand upon the three words that you choose. Um, and then I guess I can just start. So for me, Okay. I probably see like warmth, um, heart, because I just think of a heart, <laughs> and then um, support. And then warmth, because I don't know, like you feel warm when, when you love something or feel loved. And then support, because I feel like a huge part of love is support. So yeah. Someone else want to go? Sure. I also said warmth as one of them, but my other two were family and comfort. Um, I said words of affirmation because that's like one of my top love languages. Um, ballpoint pens because I think that like writing letters or just like writing emotions out is really like satisfying to me. Um, and then my third one was kittens because I love my kittens. <laughs> what was what? Like kittens and cats. Kittens. Okay, I thought you said kids and I was really confused. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, my three words are awe, sacrifice, and power. Um, and I chose awe because like, I don't know, I just, I guess to me, um, like love is expanding your sense of self and really recognizing, I don't know, like, I just feel like there's like awe when you realize like just how interconnected things are and how much you are related to other people um, and how like, I don't know, and how other people have contributed to your journey. So that's why like awe stands out to me. Um, sacrifice because I feel like it's impossible to love something without like yourself being changed and without you like sacrificing part of yourself. Um, and then power because I've been thinking a lot about um, how do you love people who are like more powerful than you or like less powerful than you and what are like the dynamic and what are the, dyna the dynamics between them, so yeah. Yeah, um, I guess my my three words, um, I mean, it's not really one word, but heart ring is one of them, um, soft, and then um, bright. So I'll, I'll explain the heart ring. Um, I, I mean, I used to not consider myself materialistic, but I realized I really like like little gifts. Um, and so I, I happen to have a significant other who got me this like little gold like heart ring. And it's like weird how much it like means to me where like I like see that and I'm like, wow, I'm like somebody got me something because they care about me. And like there are a lot of different ways that people can show that. Um, I think similar to what other people are saying about warmth, I think love is just soft. Um, 
and very comforting. And then I say bright because I think that when you love people, that can be in a lot of different ways that things are just brighter and happier um, when you're experiencing love with other people. Awesome. Um, Gary, did you have, did you want to say any? Zoe, has your, um, has your life felt brighter in recent years or? Um, yes. I mean, are you, are you saying in, in relation to having a significant other? Because I don't know if that's, but I think love in yeah. any way. Yeah, yeah, like just with the relationships in general. I think so. Um, and I think that like finding love in your friendships, I think is really important. Like I think there was a period of time where I was like, I don't love my friends because that's not how friendship works. And then I was like, no, I was like, I do love my friends and it's okay to lean into that um, and really like rely on your friends for things. Well, I can, I can say a few words. Um, I'll say choice. Uh, liberation, uh, healing. And I think that uh, I've shared this quote before, and I'm probably going to butcher it, but um, love is that which enables choice. So um, something that uh, I think a lot of people rightfully complain about uh, when uh, a friendship or a significant other is constraining and uh, suffocating um, and doesn't want you to do certain things. And sometimes that's like out of, out of, a, you know, good intentions, but often it's, uh, it can feel um it can feel really bad because, and I, cause I think deep down, you know, that you're, eliminating your ability to make good choices for yourself. So I think love is liberating for that reason. Well, thank you guys for sharing. Um, now on to the questions. Does anyone have a question they want to start us off with? Um, well, one of the things that I thought was interesting, Ashley, was like how you're talking about sacrifice. So not exactly sure about a question, but I just was wondering if we could like dive more into that and like kind of explore more. Um, because when I think of like sacrifice in terms of love, I think of like someone sacrificing something for you, like in terms of like parents for you getting better opportunities. But I think it's interesting to consider like what you sacrifice um, as well. So I don't know. I want to hear more about your thoughts on that and also what other people thought as well. well. I just wanted to say this is really cool. This is like this this organism of group think is evolving uh, as we speak because it used to just be like questions as the baseline. Well, uh, before we didn't have a word association either, but this is cool because it's like intersection of this and this go. <laughs> I think that has a lot of potential. So. Yeah, like I, I'm still like trying to make sense of it, but I guess like to me, I feel like in some ways, like sacrifice is like the currency of love, right? It's kind of like how you know it's real. Um, I think, you know, like there's the person that you like would have become if you like didn't love anyone or anything, and you were like, we're just kind of like independent and like going on your individual journey but like when you recognize um like the love that surrounds you like you are inviting in like new influences and like and that impacts like how you spend your time um and like the way that you like live and move through the world so I guess like in some ways like you're sacrificing like parts of your old self to welcome in like parts of your new self and I feel like that also like ties into like the idea of like growth and how love like creates room for that I feel like I don't know I feel like thinking about sacrifice as it like pertains to love is like in a way, it's kind of terrifying to me because I don't know why, but my first association with it is like 
settling or giving up like a like a part of you for someone else um and like I feel like I've always been told by my parents to never do that to never like you know to like remain like the person you are um without like having to give up either like even if it's just like moving somewhere for someone or like doing that but then I think about like the sacrifices my parents made for me and my siblings and like that's that 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 list is long um so I don't know that's just kind of like the first thing that comes to mind which is like a little terrifying but mm, that makes me think of a question so if love is sacrifice how and, and you have to sacrifice to love someone how do you not like lose yourself in that like how do you not sacrifice too much or is that even an answerable question I don't no, know I think it I think it is and I might I might ramble so I'll try to keep it like on topic to the question but I think that Ashley said something really interesting about how sacrifice is the currency of love which means that both parties have to do it and I think that that's when you see like somebody is losing themselves in a relationship when somebody is sacrificing everything and somebody is just gaining from that sacrifice um which I mean I, that's something that I've had to challenge myself on is that it's also not 50 50 all the time but it's just like if you like zoom out like big picture is it almost 50 50 um because I think that I mean, it's going to be 80, 20 sometimes because somebody's really down. Your friend can't provide for you in the same way they always have. Um, but also you're going to be in that same situation. So I think it just can't, it can't pull everything out of you all of the time, but it will do that some of the time, which is not really an answer to the question. But I think sometimes you just almost feel it. I think where you're like, I'm not who I am anymore. No, I think that was a good answer. That was good. Well, I will say I really resonated with the whole idea of like 50-50 because I think that's also something that I struggled with, not even in like romantic ways, but also just like in friendships because it feels like I don't know, like, you're always like, oh, like, you want to make sure that it's equal because you don't want to, like, lose yourself in this or, like, give so much and the person's not even going to be willing to give anything in return. Um, but, like, it's not always going to be perfectly 50-50. And I think that's, like, something that, like, both parties, what if both parties can understand it, then it's, like, a lot healthier because, like, people don't have the pressure of, like, always giving back equally. And, like, you can rely on someone when you are down and you know that um, they can rely on you when they're down. And I think that's, like, um, a lot healthier but I also think that like in terms of like love is sacrifice maybe it's just like sacrificing time um, because like time to be with them or time to do things for them and in that sense I guess like you wouldn't really lose yourself you would more so just like balance like the time that you have in a day and like because you love them so much like you would give part of like your precious time to them if that makes sense and I think a lot about like how I would I don't want to say like lose sleep but that's like the first thing that comes to mind but like if I was talking to someone that I love like I would definitely stay up later to talk to them um if that's the only time I could talk to them or if someone needed help with something I would stay up late to help them with that if I love them because that's just like how like they needed me in that moment so I guess like I'm not necessarily like sacrificing myself or my personality in that sense but I am sacrificing my time which is something that's also valuable so I guess I don't really know how that would answer the question, but that's kind of like my take on it. Yeah, I I definitely like resonate with that. And I also feel like, um, like I'm almost not sure like if sacrifice is like the right word to use because like there, like there are certain people who like you would like sacrifice your time for, but like, if you know that you didn't stay up later with them, like you would feel really bad about it and like it would make you feel even worse. And like, if you didn't help them, like you'd be sacrificing, I mean, you'd be like giving up even more. So it's almost like, like that other person is like 
tied to you in such a close way where like they are almost like an extension of you and you know that if you don't take care of them like you won't be taking care of your own like mm. health or like your own like I don't know like your own character I'm not sure if that makes sense um and I think just in terms of expanding your sense of self I think that's when you really know that your sense of self has been expanded when you said like Ashley what you said um where there are people who you're so connected to that if you don't take care of them you're not taking care of yourself so wow that was really really powerful All right, anything else on this or any other questions people want to pose? Um, well, one thing, Ashley, that you mentioned also kind of like posed another idea or, well, it makes me pose another question to you all is just like, if um, like someone is an extension of self, like how do you set a balance between like taking care of yourself versus taking care of that extension of yourself? Because at least like for me, I don't know if like this is a problem that any of you face, but like I know that like I would do like anything for the people that I love, but I also know that like I tend not to prioritize myself. So like how do you find that balance and just like um, know when to like, I guess, make a barrier, I guess, because I know that like if it was between taking care of someone I love versus taking care of myself, like I would probably spend the time helping them with their project versus like doing my homework because like that is what comes most naturally to me. But I also know that there are times when I probably should be doing my homework instead of helping out somebody else. So yeah, I guess, like, how do you find a balance when you ne don't even necessarily like want to find a balance because like you actually enjoy helping them? I think the first thing that comes to mind, at least personally, is like, I know that if I don't get eight hours of sleep, I will be horrible in the day. Like I, I just, I, it's so bad. Like I will be so cranky for no reason. And it's like, nothing fixes it other than that eight hours. Like it's not like a nap or coffee will do it. It's like, I need eight hours at night. Um, and so if I wake up and I'm, but the thing is like, I know that I have to be up at a certain time too. So like, if I'm literally losing sleep over something that like I prioritize that I shouldn't have, um, at least in that moment, like I, that's kind of the indicator for me that's like, you need to like re like rethink your focus. Um, and I think part of like that rethinking process is setting boundaries that are very like clear, at least to you and like either the other person or just like whoever, whoever else is involved. Um, because once you like set them, like kind of just thinking about them makes it easier for you to just, you yourself to brush past them too. Um, but when you actually like talk about it, like it makes it harder for you to like not follow that boundary. And it also makes it harder for the other person to not follow that boundary too. Um, at least in my experience, so, like those are kind of like the sleep is the indicator, but then like the boundaries is like the call to action almost. Yeah. And I think that if you do set those boundaries for yourself and you follow them, then you're going to be taking care of the people around you more naturally. Like, it, like, like Nora said, like if she doesn't get that sleep, she's going to be cranky. So obviously she's not going to be able to take care of the people around her and show them love unless she's showing herself love through those boundaries. Yeah. Like, it like even reminds me of like, um, like even if we like don't talk about like loving people, but like, you know, like loving a cause, like, like there are like activists who will like sacrifice them like themselves for a cause like you know like climate activists around like extinction rebellion or like activists around like immigration and climate justice like their lives are literally like dedicated to this cause because like they love it so much but they also need to figure out a way to like set those boundaries and take care of themselves to like actually be useful in pushing forward that cause so that's something like that just reminded me of. And I think this isn't, this is sort of related, I guess, to that point of boundaries too, is that if you set boundaries and they're not being respected, it's not on you. And I think that that's mm -hmm. kind of something important is to be able to listen to your gut of like, and like what like Nora's example, or especially Ash's example, where if you care about a cause, 
and then you're like, well, I need to take this time off because this is really draining work. And the organizers are like, no, like, how could you do that? You don't care about it. That is perhaps a sign that it's not for you. Um, which you know doesn't mean that your your love or your work wasn't any less valuable. It's just that it's not the right fit. But I know it's it's hard to learn to trust your gut in these situations where you want guidance from other people, but sometimes it's the other people that you're looking for guidance from who are also, you know, perpetuating these things on you as well. Any other thoughts on this? Cool. And if you guys don't want to pose a question, you can also do the same sort of thing Mariam did with, I don't know, it can be open-ended, so anything really. Yeah, and I think that's a cool, um, it has a cool relationship to the word association because then people can just connect two, connect two words. Can you go back up so I can see the words? Yeah. Um, one of the things that like just comes to mind, just like as a talking point was like Zoe's, I think it was a ring. I like, I, I don't remember it. Like it was like a heart ring or something. Um, I always thought that I, like, I really like knowing people's love languages. Cause I think that's important. Yeah. Like it's a form of communication to me. And I always thought that it was selfish to like, like want things that like, like want like literal, like materialistic things. But I think like, it's not even like, oh, I need this like $300 XYZ. It's like something thought, something like reminded someone of you. And I think that that's like refreshing. So even if it's like, I don't know, a playlist or like a photo of like, hey, look at this. Like it reminded me of something you were talking about earlier. Um, it's, it's like, I don't know. I think that we put like a weird emphasis on like that being materialistic or like shallow, but I think that it's, I don't know, I think it's cool. Yeah, Zoe, I definitely, go ahead. No, Madison, I was saying maybe you can create a new question instead of housing that under this question. Okay. Um, maybe it's like, how do you show, how do you show someone you love them? Yeah, and I was gonna say to Zoe's point, I really applaud you for, I mean, this almost sounds weird, but for like admitting that um, like like gifts are like a form of your love language, because I don't think I've ever actually heard someone say that. They're almost like, they feel like ashamed because as Nora said, there's just like kind of like a negative connotation around it. Um, but I don't think it is, it, it's a bad thing um, because it's just like a reminder of someone you love, so yeah. And I'll elaborate too, because I think Nora made a good point that it's not always materialistic. Like I think that I attach a lot of meaning to things like I know that I had a friend over and I walked through every item in my closet and could tell her a specific memory when I wore something in that closet and like could tell her what I wore it with, which is like weird. Like you shouldn't look in your closet and like know that. But I think that things matter. Um, like I know that um, when I like first started dating my significant other, he like pulled this like flower or something off some bush and like put it in my hair and like I couldn't get it out. And so eventually I got it out and I kept that flower. Like this flower was like crumpling up, like dying, but like sitting in my room for weeks. Um, just because I think I eventually I realized I was like stuff matters and it doesn't have to be like something nice. It can just be something as like almost as dumb as like a little flower or something, but it's okay to admit that like stuff matters. You just have to know why it matters. I think that's really important. I, oh, sorry. Sorry, I was just gonna say, I love the point specifically like about flower, like, cause it, it doesn't only remind me of like a person, but like um, there's this one speech tournament in the year, it's called like Tournament of Roses. And I remember last year, like at the award ceremony, they would hand you like a bouquet of roses. Um, and like, I still have mine, like I, like I froze them. Cause I was like, this is something that, it was like a good day. And like having that memory to like, not only a person, but like an activity that I love, like, I don't know, it's cool to me. I never thought about it like that. 
Um, I'd love to also answer this question. By the way, I'm Chabu, I'm 18, and I am a first year at U of T. But um, just to think about how I show someone love, like I also am in the same vein of Zoe in the sense that like acts of service is my love language, which is like super, like it's strange. Like a lot of people are just like, oh, so you just want people to do things for you. Um, or like you want to do things for other people. But in reality, it's just like how I like to show like my affect affection for other people instead of like just saying like, oh, I love you on someone's way out. I usually say like, oh, drive safe or like I hope whatever is going on in your day like goes well or that type of thing. Um, and so I think that there's like a very weird connotation where like certain ways of showing love are overvalued versus others or like misconstrued in a weird way. But I think that since it is an expression of love, it usually comes from a genuine place. Um, so I have like a deep founder respect for all the different ways that people show love. Um, and always find it interesting to like hear how someone goes about it. And I'll, I'll add that another really important thing too, I think, is to recognize how other people value things. So like, I, mm -hmm. I like getting like cards, I like getting little things. And so like, I make people a ton of cards. And I'll use the example of my sniffing other because he is more of like a words of affection and quality time person, which like I value those things, but I just like, you know, if we called on the phone for an hour, like that's really good for me. And I don't necessarily have to, you know, like say that I love him and like that or like I need I don't need to hear that to feel that, if that makes sense. But like eventually like reconciling the fact that like getting him a gift does not matter to him and like that like I can't just reciprocate my own love language onto somebody else um so it's good to ask other people what their love language is and to try to try to accommodate that as much as possible and I, I think is. oh go ahead no I just wanted to say that is so 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 true especially when you have a like really important relationship where like you have a lot of love for each other but your love languages are different um it can like almost like create issues like my sister her love language is quality time and that like couldn't be farther from my love language like I'm cool with just like existing in the same space and like not having to say anything and like that doesn't work for her so I think that it's really important to like have that conversation almost and just be like oh like what's your love language so because it is an act of service in a way to like learn their love language too and to employ it in conversation yeah, and I was just going to build off of that. It, ju it just shows how important communication is because two people could have the same affection for each other, but just be showing their love in different ways. And it can be totally like people can get like the wrong ideas. So that's just something really interesting to think about as well. Another thing that kind of just like all of this reminds me of is how like I feel like at least in my personal experiences, no one ever talks about how like how people have different love languages and like, oh, you should try and figure out what your love language is to make sure that like you're getting what you need and you're able to communicate that, which is kind of weird to me because I feel like love is something that like everyone needs to survive. It's not just like, oh, you can have it or you can't have it. Like, I feel like love is like essential, but like no one really ever talks about this, which is kind of strange. And it's like hard to make sure that people are feeling like happy and loved if you don't ever have these conversations and I feel like especially with things being underappreciated or like things being like shallow like Zoe I completely related when you're talking about like your clothes like whenever I talk about clothes everyone's like oh like okay good for you like you like shopping you like clothes but like I don't know like especially like for me like I can associate memories with clothes and I also take like a lot of pictures because that's how like I remember like memories with the people that I love or like things that I just really enjoyed and people are like oh you're so shallow like you're not in the moment but for me like that is how like I preserve those things and that I'm able to like look back on them so I think it's really interesting how um I don't know things just have certain like connotations associated with them that couldn't really be further from the truth okay so on the topic of love, love languages this is really making me wonder I don't want to take too much time from our conversation but I really just want to know if we can just go around and say what our love languages are because I mean, I've spent so much time with you guys, but we haven't talked about that this a lot, and I feel like we should, so. Anyone want to start? I can start since I've already sort of talked about mine. Um, I'm realizing that gifts is one of them, but every time I've taken the quiz, I've gotten quality time, so I'll put, I'll put those two. 
And I also mentioned mine earlier, but acts of service is my love language, both receiving and um, giving. Um, mine is words of affirmation and also quality time, but, and this is kind of a tangent, but I think it's interesting that like, your love language can be different for like how you want to receive love and how you give love. So like, I like receiving love as words of affirmation, but I like giving it as quality time. So I don't know, those kind of go hand in hand for me. Well, I'll say that honestly, I think I'm gonna take the quiz after this, but from my experiences, um, I will say that I think it is um, a mixture of like gifts and acts of service. And I know that the way that like I give love is through acts of service and um, words of affirmation, um, but yeah. Yeah, I also definitely need to take this quiz, <laughs> but I'm guessing that mine will probably be words of affirmation. I like, it's really weird. Like I was actually like, like it was really interesting listening to you all like talk about um, like gifts because I can't remember like things that are associated, like memories that are associated with things. Like it doesn't come up for me easily. So I'm like really bad with gifts. Like if someone gives me a gift, like it's, like, it sounds so bad, but I'll, like, forget about it and, like, don't remember it. So that is probably not my love language. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm really bad at giving gifts. And, like, my sister, she, that's, like, that's definitely her thing. I just, I always feel really bad, but, I mean, just like you said, it's not how I am. Um, but I would, I haven't taken the quiz, but mine's probably words of affirmation and quality time. I don't know, probably, uh, yeah, I get it. It's so hard to say, honestly, but if I were to guess, that's what I would say. All right, um, anyone have a question, anything? Yeah, um, I was wondering if we could explore different kinds of love or like different kinds of relationships where you have love. In a group think of the past, Elena kind of mentioned like how overinvested we are as a society in like romantic relationships. Um, and as someone who's like experienced both, I think that my like most meaningful and deep relationships are like platonic ones or ones with like my siblings and family members and so on and so forth. And I just think that because we spend so much time focusing on romantic relationships, it's almost hard to navigate platonic or like really deep and meaningful platonic relationships because there's no consistent guidance or conversations that happened around that. I mean, that's such a good point that brings up, I'm pretty sure what Zoe said about her not thinking that she like loved her friends. Um, Wow, that's really interesting to think about. I just heard on this podcast the other day that uh, people are really struggling to be good friends. And I think it's a skill. Uh, I don't think you just, you know, wake up into the world knowing how to be a good friend. I think there's, you have to pay a lot of attention. And, and know the other person really well, et cetera. Yeah, I heard something like one in four people don't have a close friend or maybe I'm messing about something, but it, it, was some, it was some sort of crazy thing um, about people not having, you know, meaningful relationships with friends. I want to second what Gary said about, about it being a skill because I think that, um, be, me being a, like being a better friend now is derived from skills that I've learned from past friendships, but also like relationships with like my parents or like romantic relationships that I've had in the past. Like the things that were relevant in all those spaces are also relevant in me being a good friend, if that makes sense. Yeah, kind of like building on that idea of 
love being a skill. Like, I will say that my, I mean, like, yes, I've lived at home with my parents for like 17 years, but like, I'll say that my relationship with my parents has gotten like exponentially better <laughs> over these past few weeks. And I feel like it's because like, I have learned that like loving them requires like energy on my part like to appreciate them and like empathize with them and like that has like been a learned skill like how do I love my parents like I wasn't just like born loving them which I feel like that was what I thought for a really long time. I think Ashley you you bring up a good point that like we don't model love very well you know what I mean like I think this extends both to like romantic relationships platonic relationships family um just like if you like watch tvs and watch movies or watch other people there's not always like a great model for people of like this is what like a good friendship looks like um and so like I know like, I know for me, like, my dad has some very, very good friends, and my mom also has some very close friends. And so I have watched them have, like, friend, like, interactions where I'm like, wow, they're, they're, like, so well connected. And, like, this is great. And I was like, I want friends like that. But then I also, like, had no idea how to replicate that in my own life. Um, and I think, unfortunately, it's one of those skills that you, you learn by messing up, um, in a lot of ways, I don't think people, I mean, people aren't born knowing how to love people well. Um, so you either have a really good model and you you kind of have a leg up on many of us or you, you learn by making mistakes and then you, you can kind of calibrate for the next time. Well, well said, Zoe. Um, I think a, a lot of people have never felt a deep sense of love. And I don't think that you know how to give love if you've never felt that. So it's it's the responsibility of older generations to break the cycle of kids rightfully believing that no one has their back and that humanity is awful. Um, kind of feeding into like what Zoe mentioned about like how it's almost like a trial by error process. Um, but it also reinforces a bad cycle because like that error could be really traumatic. And then in the following relationship, you almost have like this really bad mental default, um, which kind of keeps you from achieving this love that you want. And so I think that as much as it is trial by error, like how you respond to like a failed relationship is super important um, because it lays the foundation for what comes next. And to add on what you're saying, Chabu, I think that part of it too is that we, there's a lot of shame around looking for love, you know what I mean? So we would almost rather somebody hop from like friendship or relationship into another one and just keep going and always be in a relationship versus like be by yourself, figure out why that last one didn't work. Um, but we, we value that like item so much that I think that people keep exposing themselves to trauma and it's not necessarily their fault but at some point it's like I'm not going to get the love I want but at least it's not the love that I had last time which doesn't necessarily mean it's good I mean you're, you're settling for something that's less than what you want but it's because there's this pressure that you have to stay like stay in something um and then when you're out of it people are like oh you're not like in a relationship anymore like like what like what are you doing now which is like, it's fine to not be in a relationship and it's fine to go through a period of time where you don't have close friends. Like that's something that you should, you should build that trust and it should be okay to grow in that process. One of the things like Zoe's point just like made me think about is like, I realized that um, like my like evolution of being like a good friend, like one of the things I had to realize is that like, love isn't necessarily supposed to be easy like I always thought that if I had to if I like 
if I had to work to keep a relationship, like not even afloat, but just like doing well, like if I had to work to make that happen, there was a problem because they just didn't understand me from the get go. And like, that was it. And I'd move on. Um, and I think that that's part of the reason, like when I like, especially during quarantine, it was almost like a forcing function to be on your own. Um, I think that that's kind of when like you really, you really, really learn about like, at least I did. I learned like, like who I am as a person, but also in, in the relationships that I choose to maintain. And I think part of the reason that like, I didn't want to work on relationships. Like, I think part of it has to do with the fact that I wasn't like, okay with being alone. Like I didn't understand myself fully. And so I thought that if someone else couldn't, then like, there was an issue with that person and I had to move on when in reality it was something that I needed to like communicate more effectively. Um, so like just that, I think that like heavy emphasis on the fact that time alone from like, not everyone, but like a good number of people is important just to learn like about yourself. Like I, and this goes back to something Gary said, which is like, we're just uncomfortable being alone with our thoughts. Like we'd rather be doing something like literally anything else than to just sit in silence. So. And Noor said something really important, which is like, it's not always easy. And recently I've been making the distinction between things that are easy versus things that come with ease. Um, I don't necessarily want things to, like I'm fine with like hard work or like having to put effort behind something, but in that same breath, it should come with ease. Like it shouldn't feel like I'm being forced or like there's a, there's some kind of friction point going on here. And I think that's like a really important distinction to make when it comes to relationships. Like it's not necessarily that the entire process or dynamic has to be easy, but engaging with them should bring you a sense of ease and like calmness and comfort. Yeah, major snaps. Love is not supposed to be easy. Um, it's not. It's not how it works. And I think that the easier that, I mean, I guess not the easier. The earlier I think you realize that, the better love gets. When you realize, like, I need to set up a time where, like, I check in with this person, and I can't expect that to happen on its own. I'm going to have to do that, um, or just being being comfortable making like some sacrifice, but also knowing when it's too much, I guess to tie back to Ashley's earlier point. I, this really reminds me of Junto's, you know, like we're not just like effortlessly all connected to each other. You know, we, we take time to talk every week, but when we are there, it comes with ease. Like the conversations flow and they're so, they're so meaningful and fulfilling. Um, so I, that just makes a lot of sense in the context of June Joe's. And back to like someone, I, I almost think to like me knowing when, like aside from the sleep thing, like me knowing when like I'm sacrificing too much is like sometimes my friends who know me really well will be like, something's off. Like that's definitely not right. Like you're like you're acting weird or like something's, something's just not right. Um, so it's kind of funny that like you you being a good friend, uh, at least for me, ha like my relationships depend on me having good friends, which also depends on me being good at like loving my friends so that I can love other people too. Um, it's just like a cool full circle moment considering my friends are the people who like keep me in check with that. I'm not sure if we've had the chance to talk about this already, but I would like to pose the topic of what's your like relationship or evolving relationship with self-love? I can, I can jump in on this. I think like, I mean, I think obviously like when I was, when I was like really little, I think I really loved myself um, but I think also that's just like when you're really little, like, you know, who else do you love? You're, I mean, you're just like, I'm awesome. I'm the best thing that's ever happened. And then obviously that like started to change um, in, um, in middle school and change in high school. And then I'll say for me personally, um, 
like was doing well and then kind of like crash like fall of 2019 just like really really hard and just had like a really like manipulative friend who like objectified me in a lot of different ways and like just didn't love any part of myself at all which was weird for like a couple of months of like of like you know you were you used to be like you know pretty happy and all that stuff and then that change and so I think that in some ways, the the CU Fellowship Shameless Plug could not have come at a better time where I actually was like, I do need to figure out who I am so that I don't end up in a situation like that again. Um, and that now I think it's it's probably the best it's ever been, which like, I hate that I have to say like, yeah, I had to hit rock bottom for me to realize that there is a lot I need to learn about myself. Um, but now I know that like, you can't, when you think you're good, you can't stop doing all the habits that were helping you get there because that's what got you there and that's what will keep you there. So stopping that was what led to everything else that happened. Um, so yeah, don't don't quit while you're ahead, I guess is what that boils down to. I think it's so important to like recognize the fact that like um, my relationship with like myself and self-love is also heavily influenced by other relationships that I have or other instances of love in my life, um, which is really complicated because you can't necessarily control those dynamics in full, but it's also really important to have um, a healthy dose of like self-love. And I mean, it's something that like I'm actively working to, it's an art that I'm working to perfect is how I like to look at it. Um, like so, like to your point, I also had a really fun experience before the CU fellowship, um, where like I just had a falling out with like a friend group that I'd been in for a really long time, and I was like, hmm, how do where do I go from here? Because I feel like everyone tells you that like, well, I c actually take it back. No one tells you that you should take time to like reflect on yourself or like who you are because I don't know, it's just not something that's valued. And I think that like for me, it was like so crucial to like actually take time to be like, oh who am I and like what do I like and what do I look for and like people that I want to spend my time with and it allowed me to be like a lot more selective with my energy and like where I was spending my time in but then the relationships that I was in I was like able to dedicate myself like fully to and not just kind of like half-ass it so I really think that like it's important to do that and like now it's so much easier for me to be like oh yeah like I'm gonna do my affirmations in the mirror and like I don't know it's just like there are things that like come a lot easier now just from having that understanding and being like open to the process of like growth and change. I want to speak to a really important point Miriam just made, which is when you have a lot of self-love, you now have the opportunity to be picky about the friends that you have because you're not like in pursuit of any kind of love, like you're content in being by yourself, which gives you like the, the chance to wait for the friendships that are actually meaningful to you like you don't need to have a friend right now but you can wait for a good friend when that comes across see now that i'm thinking about it i don't think of self-love as just like seeing all of who you are and then just like loving yourself for like whatever you are in that moment it's like realizing who you are now and how you want to grow I realized that like I had to make a decision for me to to acknowledge that I was like a constantly evolving system and that's really when I got an idea of actually what self-love was because I think before like I thought self-love like Norris talked about this before was like doing a face mask and taking some time off or whatever but like my whole view of self-love has just completely been transformed I think it's a lot about you know like I said just like evolution Madison, I really, really resonate with that. Um, it makes me think it was, I think, Trevor, I think you wrote this on the platform about like, un like important, unimportant things. And like, I think a lot of my relationship with self-love has been, you know, like, like, I feel like I was very selective in like the parts of me, myself that I loved and like the parts of myself that I like, gave energy to to like cultivate and grow and I think like to me kind of like how I am growing in self-love is just realizing that like 
there are a lot of like innate like dreams and like gifts and talents that like I haven't even tapped into yet and like they are like entitled to my time and my attention and my energy to like invest in that and so Madison like what you said about growth just really reminded me of that um one of the things like I realized with a friend the other day was like the almost like the personalities that happen like one of them is very or like I, I guess like it's inner monologue versus personality to like go back to like a past group thing um but like on my like journey of self-love like one of I mean like if Reddit, every morning it's just like a post-it note filled with like a bunch of harsh questions that's like that just like force me to address certain things that I otherwise wouldn't and there's that part of me that's very like um she's like she's very nitpicky like she's like okay but you still need to fix this and like you still need to do this um but she's also balanced out with the part of me that that does skincare as like li like like I, I I just keep coming back to my private story because that's literally where I'll post just like skincare because it's it it's like it works for me and it's it's calming um so there's like a part of me that's like love every aspect of yourself and for a long long time I let that be like my definition of self-love but I think that gave me an excuse for like stuff that I was doing that wasn't healthy like it was like mm. I'd do something and I'd be like oh well this is just like this is just something I need to do and it's like no that's that's something you need to fix um and that's kind of where like like post-it note harsh question me comes in and she's like you can love it for what it could be, but right now it's something that you need to work on. I think that like it, what Noor's talking about also circles back to the idea of like loving like easy parts of yourself that are easy to love and then also loving like ugly parts of yourself and like what does that mean and what does that look like? Um, what I think there's like qualities in myself that I appreciate and like it's really easy to be like oh like you know be proud of yourself in this or like you know take note of this achievement that you've made but then there's like spaces that I really need to like grow or there's things that I need to hold myself accountable for and it's also an act of love to like be firm with myself or to be like okay like it is an act of love to go and do your homework right now because you don't want to be stressed a week from now you know what I mean like there's also it's almost it's almost like having a parental dynamic for yourself being like I love you so I'm going to ask you to do this like really hard or uncomfortable thing yeah I I'm not sure like how relevant this is but um I was so I've been thinking about this idea of like sometimes like what is easy to do or like what you know like is like your gut feeling or what feels intuitive to do or to love is actually like you know like in like an emotional impulse or like a previous bad habit or like a, or an attachment to the past and like I feel like there are some things that are like super easy and just like comes super naturally um and like I feel like in some circumstances that type of love or that type of like whatever you're doing can actually be really harmful for you if you don't just stop to think about like why like you're doing that and i think that's part of why like chava what you're saying like almost being like a parent to yourself is so important because i know there are things that like i do them and my mom's like why like why are you doing that and that's not a question that like I process, but it's something that, like my parents are like, like you're like you and your brother are dancing around the living room. Why are you doing that? Um, and that's something that can extend to a lot like other less benign examples of just like like really thinking about why you're doing something, um, and like how I mean self love is protecting yourself as well, and sometimes that means protecting yourself from yourself. Um, which is sometimes hard to navigate. Sorry, I'm gonna get this down. Um, well, it is about time for us to close, but uh, before we end, I wanna go around um, and see if you guys have any reflections on how this went. I think that like 
it's a topic that is often seen as super frivolous um, or even like irrelevant to challenges and issues and things that we face. But I would argue that this conversation proves how important it is and how like this is a current underlying theme in almost everything that we do. So I love that this was the topic that we had today. Um, I thought it was funny, like Chabu said, she loved the topic that we had today, um, because I do too. Um, yeah, I think like, I went into this with a lot of like notions, or not like preconceived notions, but kind of like what I thought were like very solidified beliefs. Um, but I'm realizing like that changes a lot based, especially like on the idea of self love, like, um, just the thought of like being a parent almost to yourself and just, just like asking the questions that you wouldn't usually ask yourself is really important. Yeah, I really like um, always have my perspective shifted after group things, but especially today, um, I never thought that like love could take work, but I think we proved that like in a lot of ways, like things being easy aren't necessarily like the good way of doing things and like putting in work isn't necessarily like, a bad thing like for yourself whether that's being straight on yourself or like putting work into relationships um and so yeah I always appreciate like different perspectives because now I'll you know be allowed to like grow in my own relationships and benefit from them so thank you yeah, second thing, everything that um, everyone else has said, but especially, especially Mari, what you were saying about applying that to other relationships. I think that there are a lot of things we talk about when it comes to like self-love and like romantic love that we don't apply to like love that you have platonically. So that's definitely something I've started thinking more about. All right. Um, well, I, I mean, I'll just say that I... I realize that self-love is at the core of all other kinds of love. Um, and so I think this helped me solidify my definition of what that looks like. Um, and just to think more about that. And also just the concept of uh, what Chabu said, uh, oh, I might butcher it, but it was like something like, hold on, I'm gonna look for it. It was like, things that I don't know Chabu what, what was it it was like things that feel easy or things that come with ease like things that are easy and then things that come with ease just that whole concept um was just really helpful to think about <laughs> um all right and if there's other reflections uh then we can go ahead and close so thank you guys so much for coming um and I will see you all next week bye bye everyone bye.